Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Village Neighborhood Association celebration of National Read a Book Day. We are very excited to be doing this uh, on a dry day. It's not raining yet, so that's great news. My name is Joanne Zygmunt. I'm the president of the Village Neighborhood Association. We were founded last year by a group of residents who all live in the village area who believe that everyone deserves to live in a beautiful, healthy, safe, and vibrant neighborhood. This is one of our first events, and there's definitely going to be many more to come. We have a membership table over here. If you are interested in joining the Neighborhood Association, it's completely free. Um, we'll send you emails to let you know when we've got meetings coming up to talk about neighborhood issues uh, or to plan park cleanups, which we also do, and fun events like this as well. So visit Megan at the table to my right, your left, um, and she can tell you more about what we do. There's also a bunch of Village Neighborhood Association members here. They're wearing name tags, um, so you can also talk to them to learn more about who we are and what we do. So this event was made possible by a whole lot of volunteer power, a lot of community love, and also a grant from the city of Brockton. There are a whole bunch of people that we need to thank for bringing this all together for us. So I'm going to go through those and acknowledge them. Um, the late Mayor Carpenter established the resident leadership program and the mini grants that are partly funding this event. So many thanks to the late Mayor Carpenter for enabling us to do this. Also, Andrea Burton, who is part of the mayor's office. She also um, was a strong proponent of neighborhood associations. And our very own Lynn Smith, who is here as well today. Lynn trains folks across Brockton to start their own neighborhood association. So if you do want to start something in anywhere in Brockton, um, make sure to check out the Resident Leadership Program, and you can find more about that either by looking um, on Facebook, um, or there's also a website which is Team Brockton RLP. Team Brockton RLP. Dot Weebly. Dot Weebly. Com. So check that out. I also want to thank Dominic Calabrese, who unfortunately isn't here this evening. He is um, a my uncle, but also a carpenter, an all-around kind of renaissance man. He does a little bit of everything. So he actually built this little free library, which we'll be talking about a little bit more, um, from scratch, and donated almost all of the materials to the Neighborhood Association as well. Uh, thanks also go to VNA member Cindy Pendergast, who painted our little free library. It's gorgeous. So you'll be able to check it out when we unveil it. And Cindy's also going to have a chance to talk a little bit about the, the theme and her artwork on it. Um, the library was installed by um, Superintendent uh, Tim Sullivan and his team at the Parks Department. So many thanks to the City Parks Department for getting it in the ground for us, which would be, I'd rather paint it or build it than actually try to figure out how to stick it in the ground straight. Uh, and we've got a whole bunch of VNA members who are really key to getting this off the ground today, too. We've got John Drzinskis, who you'll hear from in a little while. He's our vice president. We've got Deborah Pierce, who's our treasurer and unfortunately has to be at work right now. Mommy, uh, we also have track? Megan Ball at the membership table. She is our um, corresponding secretary. Sherry Lee Hopwood, who I believe uh, is right back there, too. She is our um, reporting secretary. Um, and then we also have a whole bunch of other Village Neighborhood Association members, including Walkerson, who's over at our snacks and drinks table. So make sure you go and get some of those for yourself as well. So that's, that's it for me. So from now on, we're going to start the fun part of the program. So please enjoy yourselves. Grab some snacks. There's free face painting and balloon animals. We have two really neat book-themed crafts. You can make a bookmark and you can also make a bookworm. Um, so at this point, I am going to hand it over to Cindy. Yes. Hello, everybody. So I guess my job is to explain the artwork that you're going to see in a second, right? You're going to unveil it. So the theme of the um, this little free library is all about how reading takes you on an adventure. It, you can learn. You can grow, you can explore, and so it's all about being adventurous. And so 
I think that it would be better. Picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> so, so I spent many hours painting it and designing it, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Cindy. Um, for those of you who are Harry Potter fans, there's um, a quote that's all over Pinterest and the web in general uh, from Hermione Granger, and she says that when you're in doubt, you need to go to the library. Um, so we thought that being National Read a Book Day um, and being the Brockton Public Library System is one of the best resources that we have in the city, um, full of knowledge, um, movies, great fun activities that happen there all the time. It's really almost a community center. Uh, we've invited Paul Engel, the director of the Brockton Public Library System, to tell us a little bit about the library. Thank you, Joanne. Um, thank you, Cindy, for, for the artwork that we're about to see. Uh, thank you, Mark, for, for coming down here and filming this for BCA. Uh, yeah, I'm the library director. My name is Paul. And um, I was thinking about what to say, and I remembered, and it's interesting that you mentioned J.K. Rowling, because um, I have a very precocious 21-year-old, but when she was about eight, uh, she said uh, she was reading um, J.K. Rowling, she was reading, uh, uh, what do they call it, the... Um, Harry Potter? The Harry Potter books, thank you. Long day. <laughs> and I said, didn't you read those already? And she said, well, Dad, I did, I didn't like them, so I figured I'd give her another shot. <laughs> and... Uh, and, and with that, I was thinking that, that, you know, the idea that reading is so fundamental to community and to education and to, to, to life in general. And um, I, I grew up a bibliophile. My kids grew up bibliophiles. Um, I'm holding in my hand Where the Sidewalk Ends, which is another favorite of my oldest daughter, Ella. Um, these little libraries are fantastic. They're, they're wonderful ways for communities to, to reach out to one another. You can communicate by putting a book in there and, and, see, and, and, and knowing somebody else will take it and take advantage of that book and read that book. And that's really, really cool. And, and I, I understand from the, that we have about eight of these libraries in Brockton, and, and I think that's awesome too. Uh, the, the bookstore at the library, which is run by the foundation, uh, helps to, to populate these these uh, little libraries around the city, and I want to make sure that you guys know that that, that, the, that this can be populated by the little library or by the uh, Brockton Public Library Foundation um, uh, library or um, bookstore. About the library, and then I'll wrap up. Uh, the library is a free and open resource for all of you. Everybody in this city, everybody in this country, can take advantage of their public library for free. That means library cards are free. That means events are free. Uh, early, later this month, we're having um, uh, Ken Gloss from the Brattle Bookshop come down and give a talk. Uh, he is a bibliophile as well. Um, so you have an opportunity to educate, to continue your education, to grow and learn and explore uh, everything there is to explore in your public library. So keep that in mind. And library cards are free. You don't have to pay for them. All you need to do is sign your name. Uh, and with that, I will say thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Cindy. And I'm handing this off to, to Joanne. Thank you, Paul. All right, so now for the big moment. John, may I ask you to come over? He's going to play Vanna for us to unveil the library. That definitely probably just aged me. Are there any kids that maybe want to help John unveil the library? Pull the ribbon off of it, pull the blanket off. Yeah, we've got one volunteer. Come on over. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. So you guys can all grab a corner of the white cloth and we need somebody, I think John, maybe you take charge of the ribbon. Yep, with Davida, we got Dawson. All right. You guys ready? So we're all going to count down from five. You guys ready? Ready? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a Boy Scout nod. There we go! Oh, they're, they're 
will be. So as folks have um, already said this evening, Little Free Libraries, the idea is that you take a book, you keep a book, you share a book. So if you're coming by the playground in Kinley Park, you can always pick up a book from the box. If you've got extra books at home that you don't want anymore, feel free to pop them in in here as well. And Village Neighborhood Association will be making sure that this is maintained um, over the next many, many years, hopefully. All right, so we've now come to the point where we're actually going to put some books in the Little Free Library. So we are super excited to welcome Carolyn Curtis to the Village Neighborhood Association's National Read-A-Book Day celebration. Carolyn has written a children's book called I Took the Moon for a Walk. Um, Carolyn, if you would like to go and grab a copy of your book. I want to invite you to be the first one to put a copy in our little free library. I've also brought a book um, called Corduroy. When I was a little kid, I used to think that all my stuffed animals came alive. Right? It's such a good one. I used to think all my stuffed animals came alive at night, which is kind of what this book is about. Um, so check it out, also in the library. John, you've got a book. It's called uh, Angela's Ashes. Angela's Ashes. Yeah. All right. Paul, come on up. Shell Silverstein. Shell Silverstein. Silverstein. <laughs> awesome. All right, there are a whole bunch of books over here. I would love it if some of the kids here would help us maybe put some more books into the library. Anybody want to help? Any adults as well, too? Come on up, guys. We need to fill it up. Come on. Star Wars. Mm. Sing me to sleep. Oh, I see something with Ninja Turtles, I think. What else? Snow Happy. You've got a great collection of children's books and adult books. So we'll continue putting more books in this library throughout the rest of this event. Um, but at this point, I'm actually going to turn it over to Carolyn Curtis, who is local. She lives in Stoughton. Um, Carolyn's going to do a reading of her book um, and some other fun activities for children. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Please enjoy the snacks, become a member, check out the crafts, tea, bookmarks, and bookworms. Thank you very much. I took the moon for a walk. Thank you all so much for coming here to read with us today. This is such an exciting day. This story, do you think it takes place in the daytime or the nighttime? Nighttime, why do you think it takes place at night? Because the moon comes out at night. That's right, there's the moon and the moon comes out at night. So, this is a story that you can help me read because it has a line that's repeated over and over again, which is, I took the moon for a walk. So when we get to that line, you can help me say that. Will you do that? Thank you. I took the moon for a walk last night. It followed behind like a still summer kite. Though there wasn't a string or a tail in sight when I took the moon for a walk. That's the line. That's the repeated line. Do you want to say that? When I took the moon for a walk. Great. That line will come again. I carried my own light just in case the moon got scared and hid its face. Do you see the moon peeking through? But it peeked through clouds that were fragile as lace when I took the moon for a walk. Good job! I warned the moon to rise a bit higher so it wouldn't get hooked in the church's tall spire. That's the steeple, the tallest part of the building. While the neighborhood dogs made a train whistle choir when I took the moon for a walk. Good 
What do you think a train whistle choir sounds like if they're dogs? Good howling. Can you guys howl like dogs? Oh, nice job. We tiptoe through grass where the night crawlers creep when the rust-bellied robins have all gone to sleep. And the moon called the doom, so the grass seemed to weep. When I took the moon for a walk. Nice job, everybody. You're good storytellers. Oh, look, it's a park, just like who we are today. We raced for the swings where I kicked my feet high. And imagine the moon had just caused me to fly. Wouldn't that be amazing? Hand holding hand through the starry night sky when I took the moon for a walk. We danced across the bridge where the smooth waters flow. The moon was above and the moon was below. Why are there two moons in that picture? There's a reflection, that's right. Good job. And right in between them, I echoed their glow when I took the moon for a walk. And as we turned back, the moon kept me in sight. It followed me home and stayed there all night. And thanked me by sharing its sweet, sleepy light when I took the moon for a walk. And that's the end of the story. You did it. You helped tell the story. Nice job. Thank you so much. If anybody wants to talk about authory things or books, we can talk afterwards. I know you have a lot of fun things to do here, so I won't go on with any sort of formal program. But please come by and say hello to me. Thank you so much.